it's our team commitment week before we head into spring ball next week. Um, it's an exciting week for me personally. Um, uh, this Saturday, they you know I, they have the uh, admitted students day. Uh, my son Bryant um, coming to Nebraska in the fall. So uh, the commitment, you know, the sacrifice he's made to live apart from us for a year. Really excited to get him back and join all the other prospective uh, Huskers as they come here. So um, excited, excited for that. Just on a family note. Obviously, last week uh, really sad to see Trev and Angie go. Um, more than just a great boss, I, you know, I consider Trev a friend. Uh, he'll be a friend of mine forever. Angie, uh, the way she reached out to Julie and has taken care of my family, I just think they're just class, class, class people. And I, you know, I wish them the best. This business is hard. Um, you know, people move from job to job. You build relationships, but uh, just really grateful for them and sad to see them go. Um, in the aftermath of that, just just been overwhelmed by the amount of people who. Uh, have really stepped up, um, you know, Chris Kaborik serving in the, you know, interim president role immediately just, you know, connecting with me and I'm sure with many other of the coaches and I've only got to know Chris for a short amount of time. Oh, <laughs> I've got, only got to know Chris for a short amount of time, but uh, just been really, uh, really surprised, not surprised, but pleased with just his level of professionalism and, and um, how, how quickly he's he's responded to me. Grateful for Governor Pillen, you know, um, his leadership at a time like this, reaching out, um, you know, it's uh, it's obviously difficult when you come here and the president leaves and the football coach leaves, but knowing that at the top of the state, you know, I know nothing political, just, you know, at the end of the day, we have a Husker there and that, that that's meant a lot to me personally and really excited for Dennis LeBlanc. Um, he is, Dennis is what's great about college athletics. Uh, he cares about the student athlete. Um, he's... He, this is one of those jobs when you work in college athletics where you can you can work a ton of hours or a few hours, and uh, Dennis works a ton of hours because he cares about young people and he saved a lot of young people's lives. And so I trust him, and uh, he's done an amazing job for us as our sport administrator, and uh, excited to see him. And then just you know, you know, anytime you know Tom Osborne calls you or all the different donors and fans you know reached out, uh, just really appreciative uh, of everybody. Um, th through what could be seen as a tough time. But I mean, I, I think this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, everyone's going to wonder why Trev left. And that's his story to tell. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I know he was very forthcoming with me and very forthright with me. And I have no complaints about the way he handled anything, at least, with, you know, with me. So very grateful for him. But uh, this is an opportunity for us to, to um, look at everything within our athletic department, everything within our, maybe even our university, and how can we be better? Because um, this is an amazing place. And, uh, you know, I started off by talking about my son being here. I would not send my son here if I didn't think it was an amazing place. Um, you know, my wife's opening a business down in South Point. We would not invest our money and our, and our futures in a place that we did not believe in. We love the state of Nebraska. We love Lincoln. We love Omaha. We love, we love, everyone everywhere that we've been and everyone that we've met and um i just think sometimes we, we, we forget some of those things um we forget how great a place this is to raise our kids and we forget how great a place this is to live and, and to work and to, to be around and so yeah while it is a tough time losing someone of trev's you know caliber all i'll say is you know i believe he put 15 years in here in athletic administration and from everything i see in our athletic department this is a well-run athletic department and this is this is a good place. And um, I know he's allowed me to do the things I think are necessary. So uh, I, he's left a place better than he's found it. And so I think it's an unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity for us to move forward. And, and the one thing Trev would always say to me is, um, and I think he took this really seriously as the Husker that he is, um, he said to me, you know, I'm, I'm only standing in this position as the athletic director at, at Nebraska. You're only standing in the position you're in because of the decisions that – Coaches like Tom Osborne and administrators made 20 years ago uh, to put us in this position where we're, you know, financially stable, we're secure, we have elite facilities, we have tremendous commitment, and the onus on Trev, or and the, now the next AD, the onus on me and the the coaches and leadership here is to make sure that 20 years from now we look back and we say, you know what, the people that guarded this place during this time were tremendous stewards of the university, and I, I, uh, I think that's really, really important. You know, we can't take a step backwards. We have to take a step forwards. And the thing that I'll say is 
we have to be unabashed in our desire to be the best. Like, we cannot worry about optics. We cannot worry about what people say. The way you win in college athletics today is you invest. And I, I can't think of a state that, should, that knows that better than this amazing state, whether it's you know, all the amazing financial institutions, you know, people all across the world you know, try to read about the people in Omaha and Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, you don't get a return until you've invested. Um, you know, all, all the agriculture across our state, you don't, you, don't, you don't get a harvest unless you've invested, unless you've sowed seed and, and watered it. And so um, whether it's salaries, whether it's facilities, whether it's upgrades, wh whatever it is, um, we need to return to the days where everybody across the country is coming to the University of Nebraska to see how things are being done. You know, I, I called Kirby Smart last week and asked him if I could come down and visit Georgia. We sent our, our, our performance nutrition people down to see Florida and Alabama. I want people coming here. You know, when, when Julie was the head dietitian at Temple and she was putting together a training table, she studied Nebraska. And so um, that to me is the place that we're at. And, you know, I, I usually don't read a lot, but I've been reading because you kind of hear what people, people are saying. And um, we don't have major problems. We have an unbelievable athletic department. Uh, we have an unbelievable opportunity. But we must, we must have vision for the future for 20 years from now. And that's what Trev had. Make no mistake. Trev spent the last year trying to tell everybody, hey, guys, revenue sharing is coming. <laughs> Like, we have to have a plan for revenue sharing when $20 million is probably going to be going to the athletes at some point here. And, you know, I don't know if any, anyone really listened. I don't know if I really listened. And all of a sudden now those, those, those lawsuits are starting to come to fruition. And it's like, oh, what, Trev was right. And so we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do, you know, think of things differently. And so as he now leaves and as he transitions, that's what has to happen here. We have to have amazing leadership that is saying to themselves, um, hey, what's the next 20 years going to be like? And how do we make sure that, the University of Nebraska Athletics is relevant in all of that. And that doesn't preclude the university, right? Um, you know, it, it's such a hard time in, in college athletics because college athletics is big, 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 big business. And if you look at the business, the University of Nebraska Athletics is one of the best businesses in college athletics. It has the least debt. We don't take student fees. We don't take money from the university. Where most schools, even in our conference, are doing that. So we have a tremendous financial model I think we have to have a ton of vision moving forward to get to that. So I don't think the issues that maybe everyone's thinking are out there. I don't, I don't know if they're out there. I don't think that they're out there. I think that we're just on the precipice of a really, really important time to get the right leadership in here who's not worried about making tough decisions, who's not worried about investing, who's not worried about, man, what are people going to say if we hire a few more people? Like, th this is the time. And it's not, just about, it's not just about who we hire. It's about who we retain. And we have to retain that leadership. We have to retain our student athletes. We have, to, we have to be the model of that across the country because that's what Tom Osborne and that's what Bob Devaney and that's what the, they, they built the best player development university in the country. And you can't develop people if you don't retain people. And so that to me is the place where we're at. I'm just so grateful for Trev and Angie, but I'm also really excited about the future and grateful for, for Governor Pillen and Chris Kaborik and everybody else that's, that's reached out to us at this time. And so... Um, I think when you look at our university right now and you start talking about, you know, hey, are we relevant? Obviously, we're always going to be relevant here. But I'm, I'm really grateful for our winter sports and how relevant they're making us across the country. You know, because when I, when I fly to Miami to recruit, you know, everyone's not only just talking about Nebraska. They're talking about Alabama and Georgia and Texas A&M and Texas and Miami. And so when you have your men's team doing what they did, when you have your women's team doing what they're doing, when you have our, a wrestling team doing what they're doing um, – it makes us relevant, and it makes us part of the conversation. And, and um, on a personal note, the relationship I have with Mark Manning and, you know, the trust to work together with Nash Hutmacher has been unbelievable. As a proud girl dad, you know, of two, two daughters, you know, uh, you know, 11 and 8, you know, how many, how many games we've been able to go watch. And I'm out there in the driveway, and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shoot, throwing them the ball, and I'm saying, like, Jazz Shelley as Leona shoots. And Markowski backs him down as Vivi takes him down and backs me down. I mean, them, for them to have role models like that, you know, like our women's volleyball team and women's tennis team, I mean, just, just amazing, not just the winning, but – the amazing experiences. I mean, go, watching us go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iowa at home and watching Jazz Shelley get up and make four free throws with the game on the line and being able to talk to my daughters about that afterwards, just amazing moments that are awesome to be a part of but also relevant nationally. And then to watch our men's team, you know, to, to think about how much joy, you know, Kasei Tominaga has brought <laughs> in just my family in the last year. To think about how hard Josiah Alec plays. To think about, you know, 
the pain and passion on Juwan Gary's face the other night. To think about, you know, Sam Hoiberg out there diving for balls. I just think it's an amazing time. And so I want to spend today um, talking, obviously, I know you guys are asking me about Trev and the future of that, but there's so much that's right. And there's so much that's good. And, you know, I've gotten kind of frustrated in the last couple of days as national people have called me and, you know, hey, what's your contract situation like? And I'm here. And I'm all in. And Julie's all in. And yeah, I, I loved Ted Carter. I love Trev. And I came because of them. But I came to be at the University of Nebraska. And I've loved the people that I've met. And we're not going anywhere um, unless you guys kick us out. And so I just want to make sure that, that, that I spend my time talking about everything that is right. And the last part of that is our team. Um, this team has come so far in these eight weeks. I mean, the problems that existed last year aren't the problems now. And the team's adjusting to me because I'm becoming a different coach rule and we're getting a different Tony White now because we're going to give our players the gift of high expectations. Um, we snuck up maybe on people sometimes this year, like, oh, the Huskers. Well, they're going to be ready for us next year. They're going to be ready for the 3-3-5. Three, three, they're going to be ready for, you know, the players that we have. And so we are pushing them and driving them. And what I love is they're accepting it and they're sprinting and they're running and they're working. And this is going to be an unbelievably competitive Spring ball, if we've done one thing well, we've put a lot of talent on the roster. And um, I'm really, really proud of them. And I don't tell them that very often. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not a fuzzy, feely type of a coach. So it's important that they hear it. I'm, I'm proud of them. And the thing that, you know, the thing that separates the good from the great, in, in, I believe, in today's generation, is their ability to handle frustration. You know, like, think about when we were young and, and there was nothing to do and parents would let us watch TV. We'd, we'd go, go do something, right? Well, our, our kids, they're, they're on an iPad nowadays. They're, they're on their phone. They're doing something. And there's just not a lot of frustration in their everyday lives. And so can we handle frustration? Can we handle it when our coach is really getting on our nerves? Can we handle it when the stakes are high? Can we handle it when we have to do something we really don't want to do? The team keeps answering that, yes, yes, yes. So we're going to push them like crazy and uh, – in a spring ball and see where we end up. So, and that was long, forgive me, uh, but uh, hopefully there's something good there. Coach, how did you, how'd you find out about that? He, he called me. me. Yeah, he called me. I was, uh, I was, uh, my, my son and I, um, we did our first ever father son trip. He had his spring break, was the same time as our spring break here. Uh, my daughter's spring break was different. So, um, my son and I, you know, we we're, were actually playing golf and uh, uh, Trev had called me, but he, you know, he had talked to me leading up to this, you know, Trev, Trev's a good athletic director. He'd had many people come after him. And so one thing, he was always pretty transparent with me. And um, I wanted him to stay, but understood when he left. Were you surprised then? Um, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, probably yeah, I thought, like, you know, well, I knew it was a reality. I, I was probably caught, caught a little bit like, oh, wow, this actually happened. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, obviously I was, uh, I was sad, um, you know, because I've really, really enjoyed working with him. What kind of leader do you do you like to work with in that athletic department? That personality traits, things like that, not names, but just yeah. qualities. Yeah, I, I really want somebody who 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 has unbelievable urgency. This is like one of the most pivotal. We we, we spend a lot of time talking about like the transfer portal and NIL. This is one of the most pivotal times in college athletics, and the. I, we just need doers. You know what I mean? We need doers. We need people who just figure it out and work, and so. Um, you know, I love the fact in Trev that I had an athletic director that was here, you know, at 7 o'clock, 7.30 every morning in a suit and tie. You know, like, he was a worker. Uh, Pat Kraft, who I worked with at Temple's now at Penn State, was a worker. You know, they were right there with you. So I, I think w what we need is somebody that's going to come in and just get things done. Um, and, again, they, they have to be really mentally strong because when you come to a place that has as big a brand as Nebraska that people are so passionate about and care about, when you do something – a lot of people are going to like it. Some people aren't going to like it. And if you're listening to the outside noise, you have no chance. So I'm just hoping that it's somebody that's a, a worker, a doer. And I also want someone, Sam, that's going to go fight. Okay, go fight in the, in the, in the committees, in the NCAA, to go, to go fight in the Big Ten. Like I could say, because I'm the football coach, I'm mad we're playing Texas A&M in both games. Because now the games are about the AD leaving. It's not about our players. Our players deserve it. The games to be about us. And so, you know, I think having somebody – Somebody that's not going to just go quietly into the night. That's a doer. That's a worker. I think that's what we need to really take what we have and, and get it on overdrive. How do you? What's your What's your level of investment in the stadium project that, that Trev laid out last fall? Um, 
and, and how do you think that should proceed with a new, a new boss? I don't know that I'm smart enough or well-versed enough to know it, right? I think when, you know, when I heard Trev talk about it, to, to think that you have a 100-year-old building it probably needs some renovations makes total sense to me, correct? Um, I think when, you know, I think when you don't have Wi-Fi so that you can't have a great experience in terms of concessions, that probably makes sense to me, right? Um, I think when, you know, there, so I, th some of those things made sense to me. I think when you talk about, you know, some of the stuff that's going to come on in terms of revenue sharing and trying to make more money out of the building makes sense to me. But beyond that, it's probably too political for me to worry about. My, I've always been really smart about, I worry about the product that's on the field. Maybe I'm going to worry about what sideline we're on. <laughs> but other than that, um, you know, leave that to the, the powers that be. We're mentioning about wanting people to come to Nebraska and look at what Nebraska is doing as a leader in all of these different spaces. You also last week tweeted something, a video along the lines of like that poem that's, mm -hmm. um, I just lost the name of it. It's, it's uh, Paul Harvey. Yeah, it's yes, a, Paul Harvey. Thank you. Farmer. So is that sort of, I think, like even before all of this news came, that's clearly a vision that you have right now for this team and this program as you're getting ready for spring ball. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so that poem, um, when we were trying to make the decision of whether to come here or not, um, that was the poem that like kept surfacing. That 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 video. It's actually like a the, the actual video for it's like there's several versions, like a Ford Ram truck. And Sat was the OC at Clemson at the time. Oh, excuse me, at the, uh, South Carolina at the time. And they were getting ready to play Tennessee and Clemson. And he would just keep sending me that. It was like you know God made a farmer. Like this is who we are. This is the place we're supposed to. I mean, I might have been born in New York City. Don't get me wrong, but like this is the ethos. This is the type of football we want to play. This is who we are and, and my wife, you know, um, you know, she, she was like, the, she, so that, that, that poem that resonated with us. Um, and um, it's one of the reasons why we came here. And so when that moment came out, sometimes when you're at a loss for words, you know, just sometimes, so I texted Jay Litt and said, hey, put some Husker, put some Husker stuff on this, please. And um, I love the clips that he used and I put it out. And it's, it's, it's basically to say that like, I came here for a purpose. I didn't come here just for people. I've met amazing people, but um, you know, I'm here for that reason, and I'm looking for players that are here for that reason. That want to build something. That want to leave something. That that um, you know, I just want to be able someday, like Coach Osborne, to walk back into the building and have people be happy to see me. You know, I I just want to, I just want to, uh, you know, <laughs> I just want to be able to, you know, sometimes like we go out to eat and with my family and. You know, we'll sit down and I'm like, man, I, I hope we have a good season next year. But you know what? I, I, I just believe so much in the fans and the people of the state of Nebraska that even if they're disappointed when we lose a game or excited when we win a game, they've always treated myself and my family with such great dignity and respect. And so that was maybe just me saying, hey, we're all in. My team's all in. My coaches are all in. And we're all in doing it in a way that um, responds to the state. How important is it for uh, not just you, but other coaches to have feedback or in the athletic director search? Um, I, I, I'm grateful for feedback, you know, but um, when I was the head coach at Temple University, I got on a plane. Bill Bradshaw hired me. I got on a plane to go out to the Fiesta Bowl Summit. I landed. He told me he had retired. A new AD came in named Clev Kevin Clark, and he embraced me. And he brought in a deputy named Pat Kraft, and Pat Kraft became my AD, and he's one of my best friends to this day. And so uh, I, I just believe in my life that through all the things I've been through, um, the right people have always shown up, and, and when they haven't, they haven't. Um, so I'd love to have feedback. I, I, you know, I love that, you know, like I said, that uh, Chris and, 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 you know, Governor Pill at least reached out to me, and the Coach Osborne reached out to me. Um, so I'd love to have feedback. I'm sure Fred and Amy and Mark and all the coaches, Coach Bolt, would love to have feedback. Uh, but, you know, people have to make decisions, and, and um, um, I'm sure we'll get someone that's, that's excited to be here. Coach, you said that um, I think it might have been in your introductory news conference where you said that anybody can be during good times. Is it just one of those times, and, and what will you find out about the people around you in the next month or so? Yeah, well, I think um, I think you know organizations uh, move forward or don't move forward based upon people's agendas. If everyone has, you know, you know, as Coach Osborne would say, as Trev would say, you know, unity of purpose. If if everything's about, you know, University of Nebraska at Lincoln. 
the University of Nebraska system, if everything's about Husker athletics, if it's about the student athletes, if it's about football, then you make the right decisions and you, you take the criticism that comes with it. You can disagree, but you disagree with an open mind. Um, if, if there's agendas, if there's, if there's other things, then you, then you can't move forward. And so I believe in the people because I've seen, since I've been here, I've seen people come together. You know, it's it maybe not always fast enough for me, but we've, we've redone so many things and we've completely upgraded so many things. And, you know, we're obviously we're not completely into the, the, the go big project building yet, which, you know, my hope is that at some point it's named after coach Osborne and his family legacy. But, and I think, I think hopefully I think Trev was moving towards that, but, um, you know, so not everything's happened yet, but I, I think that, like I said, this is a, this is a tremendous time. And, um, you know, when, when, when you lose, when one of your own leaves, when, when Trev leaves, everyone should stop and take pause and say, well, we know how much Trev loved this university. Hey, is there, what's here? What, what do we need to come together about? And I think those, have, those things, they don't need to happen on Twitter. They don't need to happen up here. They need to happen behind closed doors with people who care. Because um, you're going to be remembered based upon what you do in hard times. You're not going to be remembered by what you do in uh, really good times. I, I loved the... Um, I love the the day by day movies. I don't know if you know, hopefully everyone's seen those. I love the day by day movies, and you're watching the second one, and you're going through you know sort of you know the the, the second title run, or the third title run, and you're watching the, the stress on Coach Osborne as the national media kind of coming after him, and you forget all that, right? And Coach Osborne's always reminded me like, hey, let me tell you about the tough times I had here. You know, everyone remembers the good times. I had a lot of tough times too, and so. Um, I think I think we'll see I think we'll see Huskers come together and um, you know we can all believe in different things and then still come together for what's best for an institution that we love and um, you know I think uh, I, I'm committed to that you know I don't need to get my way I just want everything to be I want everything to be as elite as possible I want us to have unbelievable urgency I want us to be the place that people visit and I want us to invest 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 and kind of do things differently this spring to kind of bring about that sense of urgency with your players and the program is just a point. It's a great question. I think, um, I think getting them to embrace doing hard things and understanding that, um, getting them to understand that like, Hey, um, I, I went through a lot of hard things last year. We went through a hard things in the season. And what I was proud of is, you know, we lose to Maryland and we come back the next week and a heartbreaker. We, and we play to the whistle again, we play to the whistle again. So, Having them understand that, hey, we can, we, we're strong enough and resilient enough to handle all that now. It's within our control to take another step. I think a big part of that has been not just working, but we're going to have more competition and more, more you know, competitive type play. Because last year the roster was a little bit more like this. Like you had really top heavy, like really good players here and then a bunch of young players and new players. And I think this year we have way more parity. And we have some guys in their sixth year that maybe they don't need to do a ton of spring football or they're coming off of injuries, but we have a lot of really good young talent. And so we'll have to just do a lot more competition because what I want to see is a team in the fourth quarter when the game comes down with five minutes left that just makes one more play than we made last year. It's not this huge overhaul. It's just, hey, make one more play on offense, make one more play on defense. You know, we, we, beat, we beat Northwestern because we, we blocked their field goal and ran it back, like not because we did something crazy that week. And so playing and competition you know I've been going and watching my daughters play a lot of sports and um, they're just way more fun when they're playing three on three or they're playing knockout than when they're doing layup lines and, and I know you need to do layup lines but this this generation likes to play you know and so um, my guys they like to go out there and compete and play and so I'm, I'm going to do more of that this spring so that we get really comfortable playing and you know if you take our scholarship quarterbacks we've got two freshmen and so they need a ton of reps. And so we will take more reps than we've ever taken before to get them ready and to get Heinrich ready and have a really strong quarterback room. How do you feel about how those freshman quarterbacks have, have fit in so far in the first couple of months, uh, you know, and the winter drills and all that stuff? They've done a great job. Um, you know, you can see a fire and a competitiveness in Dylan. Um, he, 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 he wants to be at the top. He wants to, you know, he, he wants to – He's chomping at the bit. He's in there at 6 o'clock in the morning throwing balls before his lift. At, he lifts at 10.30, but he's in there at 6 throwing. Uh, you can see it with Danny. He comes in. He's working on football. I mean, they, um, you know, they're, they're both winners. They, they, they're both competitive guys. And so you can see it with Heinrich as an older player working. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, hey, his elbow getting up and him working on that and taking time over spring break to work on that. So I've been really pleased. I've been pleased with their effort. Um, now they got to get to the football. And, again, I talk back about being frustrated. 
you know, it's it's that game you're playing quarterback in where, like, just nothing seems to kind of go right, right? Like, where, like, you just keep getting hit and they're fooling you with the coverages and which quarterback gets kind of pissed off and attacks. I mean, I, I remember as a young coach at, at the Giants, oh, man, Eli Manning, you know, he might, he, might have thrown, he might have thrown five picks against the Buccaneers in the first half, four or five, I can't remember what it was, and he came back and threw for 500 yards and we won. It was like you saw the competitive greatness in Eli. And um, so I, I think you know, that's the next step for them, but I've been really pleased, really pleased, and I see a lot of that fire coming out of them. When you were setting up the spring ball schedule, you're starting, you have this week and then officially, but you waited until after spring break. Um, as you're talking about this competition, can you kind of talk through that decision to set it up the way that you have? When I got here last year, the, sp the spring game was already set. And so that what happened afterwards was the spring game, the, the, we had a bunch of like dead time, you know? And so I just said, well, why don't we maximize the amount of time? Now, there's benefits to having an earlier spring game. If someone gets hurt, they have more time. But, um, you know, with over 50% of our roster being, you know, redshirt freshmen or newcomers, uh, you know, I wanted as much time to lift, as much time. So we kind of just pushed the spring game back a week so there's less dead time on the back end. I believe the academic calendar is a little bit different this year. They get a good break after the spring games. We don't come back till June 1st. And so th those are some reasons of just trying to get that done. You know, last year I was kind of caught up with when the portal was. And this year I was like, you know what, uh, I'm going to coach the guys, you know. So, and I just felt like, hey, a bunch of good weeks here would help us. And then it l worked out where there was this week, spring break last week, and then this week. And so we've always done this team commitment week. You know, we divide into teams. We go to Twitter. We have all kinds of competitions in the morning. We do team activities, you know, voluntary team activities at night. Um, and it's it's a chance for us, it's a chance for us to, to to get to know each other, you know, on a kind of smaller level, you know, smaller teams within the team. So it's a fun week. So we'll start next week. But it was just kind of that reason of just trying to push things back, so there's not as much dead time, just kind of in May. How did you feel about the way they came out of? Um, we heard from you at the beginning of Matt Drill's winter conditioning. So at the end of it, how'd you feel about their commitment to that? The work the work that they, they put in, kind of some of the leadership qualities that you talked about in February that you were looking to see? Yeah, I'm, um, I've been very pleased. Um, I've been really, really pleased. You know, a lot of guys are really good at like, competitions and working through things that they like. Like if you, if you had a tug of war or a Madden tournament or a 40 yard dash, they'll compete all day. Not everybody in life likes to compete at things we hate. <laughs> you know, we try to avoid the things we hate. And so things like mat drills, what's the point of them? It's making them compete at something they don't want, they don't like. And what happened over the course of, of the weeks is and we would change it up. We did things way different than we ever have. You know, your 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 Isaac Giffords, your Marquise Bufords, your Malcolm Hartzogs, your you know, your Heinrichs, your Chief Borders, your uh, Ruquan Buckleys, um, you know, the, these guys, and there's many more, but you know, these guys started to really, I think, get the guys to understand, hey, let's enjoy this and let's attack this. And if you can, if you can enjoy doing the things you don't like doing, or make yourself enjoy it, you know, as the, as the seals say, embrace the suck. Um, you have a chance, and so I, I just I saw a lot of that. The next thing you know, you saw, the Jacory Barneys and the freshmen and the Keelan Smiths and all them really starting to attack. So, I was really pleased with the leadership. Um, I've been challenging the seniors. When you have a, a bunch of young players that come in, sometimes they have a tendency to like, hey, let's get these young guys right. What we need is we need Tommy Hill to make a jump. And I, we need Ty Robinson to make a jump. And Bryce Benhart and Ben Scott and Thomas Fedoni and uh, Nate Borgatur, Luke Lynn. We, we need all these older players to make a jump. The young players will follow. And um, I, I, I feel like they have. Um, they have in terms of their leadership. And uh, I think they will in spring ball if we do what I talked about earlier, make it really competitive. Yeah, reflect on, you know, last season, how did you feel like your team's athletic profile uh, went? And like, how did you seek to improve it in the off season? And like, do you want the team to be faster, or bigger, or stronger? All those kind of things. Yeah, I think we're always going to chase athleticism. We, we believe in athleticism. You know, Jeremiah Charles was like the talk of the town here for a couple of weeks as he won the dunk contest. And you know, I just remember I, I remember everything. I remember being asked like, you know, we're taking you know taking a guy with no offers, and I'm like, just trust me. I went I went to a basketball game. I saw him. I'm watching Ishmael Smith Flores and the other kid on the team. I watch him dunk, going to dunk and looking like into the rim as he dunked. And I said, Coop, go watch him on your phone, bro. And Coach Wager was with us at the time. He was like, oh, he's a good player, too. And <laughs> we watched him. And he, here he is. He's running track. He's winning the dunk contest. And he's going to be a heck of a corner. So I think a lot of it's, it's recruiting and it's development. Our players are very committed 
to to the weight room to the performance nutrition to movement um so i i like where we're at i think we're always gonna keep pushing it so that's we just we try to recruit athletes because eventually that speed shows up that 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 explosiveness shows up but i think we had a really good year if you looked at our team right now i think you'd be really impressed with how they look like we don't we look we look big and strong and physical um we just have to continue that well, you mentioned you like where the Ross the roster is talent wise. Is there is there any areas in particular that you're struck by? Yeah, I think what we have is we have. Ask me the question again. Any specific areas? Where, where, yeah, specific areas of the roster where you're particularly impressed with talent. Mm. You know, I think what overall let me say this. I think what we have is we just have a, a like a, a breadth. You know, like we have we have just a ton of guys that I think are good players. Just a lot of them aren't established yet. And so can they, can they go through that process? Like, it's one thing to go in and play 10 plays. It's one thing to go in and be on the scout team. It's another thing to go out there when all the pressure's on the line. You know what I mean? And, and you know, you're, you're, you're playing, uh, you know, you're playing, you know, the, the UTEP receiver on fourth and goal with the game on the line. Like, you know, who can you go compete then? So I think we have a lot of just, you know, young talent with some older leadership. Just can we get them to turn over? I think um, – I just, you know, I've always been pleased with with the depth in our secondary. Um, I'm pleased with the, the depth in the running back room. Um, you know, some of those guys are still banged up. So, you know, spring ball, you know, the, you know, you might not see Gabe Irving. You know, you know, you might see Ramirez a little bit, but not a ton. Um, but there's some young players there that you know are going to get some reps. So, um, I, uh, I, I, there's a lot of guys I've seen them move. I've seen them do mat drills. I've seen, but I just haven't seen them play football yet. So I'm excited for that. But I think those are two areas where you know we've we've made some progress. Did you have any um, scholarship departure guys before spring ball starts here? And then secondly, have you ever had twenty three newcomers come in at a semester like this before? That is about as big of a number as you've seen. We got the transfers with the yeah, freshmen. yeah. It's um, it's it's one of the biggest changes in in college athletics. I remember I remember my when I first got back, going talking to like uh, Dabo Sweeney, one of the head coaches, meetings, him talking about their whole team was there in in the in the winter i think that really helps you know you can see the development in guys you know you see grant bricks walking around at you know 300 pounds and you're like look you know look 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 how much you know mass he's put on um it it changes a little bit you know changes a little bit how i think you have to approach the off season because you have the freshmen from last year who had to who didn't go through it so the you know the malachi coleman's and you know the guys who weren't here in the spring this is their first winter then you have the guys coming in their first winter. So there's a lot more maybe orientation than you're used to. There's a lot more trying to cross over and getting guys to know each other than you're used to. And there's a lot more getting people to understand the standards. You know, some guys, you know what, maybe at their last school, they, they didn't make them go to class. Maybe at their last school, they didn't make them go to lunch. Maybe at their last school, like when, when they're, they're drinking a water bottle and the student manager sits there, they just take the water bottle, throw it in the ground, and, you know, the student manager goes over and picks it up. We don't do that here. And so just... Just sometimes you're not just you know, doing that with young players coming in because the new players come in, all they know is the Husker way. But having guys who've been other places understand that this is what we do here, just a little bit more orientation, a little bit more taking time, a little bit more counting on the older players. But the good news is we have a lot of talent, a lot of guys we can, we can really, I think, amp up and, and get ready for the fall. With the pro day uh, this week, just what are you looking forward to for that group of guys who are getting ready to turn the page uh, for the next phase of their careers? Well, you know, I'm excited for them. Um, I think in that group you have some really really good football players who, who can help themselves by running well. <laughs> you know, um, you know Quentin Newsom unfortunately hurt his shoulder there in the Maryland. You know, Maryland week. I think he missed that game. Right, and they came back and played after that. So had to have off season shoulder surgery. So his his um, his training isn't you know maybe where he wanted it to be in terms of time. But Quentin's a tremendous competitor, and I think you know he can help himself. Um, a lot of those guys can help themselves. You know, I, I got a ton of good feedback from Omar Brown. Um, you know, I went down and saw him at the the the, uh, the uh, uh, East West game, NFL PA game, the one in Dallas. And um, so I think if he goes out and runs well, he'll really help himself. So I hope those guys. You know, there's not many of them. I hope they I hope they go out and they they bust their tail. And we have guys like Phelan Sanford that I. I just believe teams should take a chance on and bring in, and I think they'll have a chance to make a team. And so when they see Phelan run 4-3-8 or 4-4-2, whatever he runs, they're going to open some eyes. So it, it's, a, it's a good group of guys, and I hope they do really well and hope we run a first-class pro day. I have one more question. We spent so much time last year talking about the quarterback play. How much, how much would better receiver play help 
the quarterback position? And how much better do you feel like you got in the offseason in, in the short amount of time than some of these transfers have been? Well, well you know, um, yes, the, the, everyone, the way the quarterback plays well is everyone plays better. And um, when you go back and look at us play last year, okay, when we faced zone teams, we, 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 we threw the football at a reasonable rate. When we faced uh, either aggressive quarters, match teams that were physical with us, or man teams, we, we struggled. And um, so a lot of that is, you know, a lot of guys we invested in early got hurt. You know what I mean? Like Marcus Washington ran by the guy in Illinois and caught the ball down the sideline. We need, and then he got hurt. You know, Isaiah got hurt. Um, you know, Ramir got hurt kind of as an option route runner on the backfield. So I think now we have all those freshmen that we had to go put in in the end of last year. Um, we have more time on task with them. They're bigger, stronger. You know, it's like I'm sitting there talking, to, you know, Jalen's running track, but, like, Jalen knows what it felt like to go out there against Michigan State and those guys. He's fast, so they're trying to grab him. And as he goes to practice now, I think, you know, he'll be better. So I think we're way better. Um, I love what Jamal Banks has brought to us. Uh, he's a competitive guy. He's played a ton of football. You know, you meet a lot of people in, in recruiting, and they tell you, like, oh, you know, this is what I'm about. And the portal's so different now, it's like, I hear some college coaches, the reason why they, they like the portal is instead of recruiting someone for two years, they can recruit them for two weeks and get them. Well, you don't know anybody in two weeks. And, you, you know, I met Jamal. He was talking about his, his passions in life and the things he wanted to do. And what I've really learned is that he's serious about it. He wants to have an impact on the world. He's a, he's a really cool guy that everyone should get to know. And he's a really good player. Uh, nayor has got all the talent in the world. And I see those young players. They've played now. They have, you know, they have confidence. You know, Demetrius Bell was – you, know, you ask anybody on our defense what Demetrius Bell was like on the scout team last year, they'll tell you. And so it'll be great to see him this spring. So I think we'll be significantly better. But I think to really hone down on it, it's going it's to be our ability versus man-to-man -man teams. It's going to be our ability versus, you know, the aggressive quarters grab you defense as you see in the Big Ten. And, you know, you need, you need Trey Palmer every once in a while to run through a safety like he did at Iowa and run by everybody, and that changes things. And uh, we had a couple of those last year. You know, I think uh, – uh, Jalen had 350 plus touchdowns, so it's just hey, Jalen takes a year, you know, year step forward. I think we'll have real com competitiveness in that room. And thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Butler will be here, and Mark Keith Cooper. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Questions for Jamal? Jamal, where do you think you've come the most with your transition to Nebraska? Where? Yeah, what areas have you gained in the most? Yeah, uh, the weight room. Uh, I've had some PRs in there. Uh, I say the playbook. Learning the plays uh, and just building relationships. I've gotten to know a lot of the players uh, and uh, just pushing myself, you know what I'm saying? And just being who I am, being where my feet are. What have you learned about the program? I mean, it's your first few months here. Yeah. The, I've learned more and more about the atmosphere, um, just the, the aura of this place, you know what I'm saying? The history is rich, it's deep, um, and it's going to continue to be that way. Uh, the the school like just it's some genuine, some genuine people out here you know what I'm saying like nice kind hearted um, and that's just who they are uh, we we had went to an event uh, a Nebraska event at some school and just the just how they treated us and you know how, how they you know wanted to know about us uh, show how much they cared about us not just as athletes but as as people as well. What about the opportunity here at Nebraska appealed to you as you were looking at various schools? Because you had options. Yeah, uh, NFL coaching staff was 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 huge. Uh, weight room, uh, coordinators, head coach, uh, just knowing what it takes to get to that next level. Uh, their vision for me as a receiver um, in the system, in the offense, uh, the school, uh, having – uh, spending time with the players, uh, I learned a lot about them. I learned a lot about, you know, why they chose Nebraska as well. And, you know, uh, I met some like-minded individuals, uh, you know, who were purpose and process driven as well. What's their vision for you? What did they, what did uh, they tell you that you can, you can yeah. do in this offense? Uh, just 
playing um, outside, uh, playing in the slot a little bit, um, just just making plays, getting open, um, you know, of course blocking and uh, and being a leader. You, you will uh, get the chance next week for sure, but have you already uh, gotten to work with the quarterbacks? Young, It's a young room, um, and, and, you know, what do you think of those guys? Yeah, we uh, they love throwing, and uh, we love catching, so um, – they they love football, you know what I'm saying, and um, you know they're they're humble, uh, and they care about each other, and they want to be the best that they can be. Um, so we get after it. And they I told uh, I told them we they even got like a little grade system for like you know what kind of balls they throw to us. Um, but uh, they just they love football, they love us, and we just want to win. You know what I'm saying? So what would you say about the? this receiver room and some of the young guys that you're getting to know them and their skill set. Yeah, super talented, like super talented. Um, you know, they just, some of them just need a little guidance and um, and it, that comes from experience. Uh, you know, the wisdom from just being a, a student athlete um, anywhere in the country, uh, the good decision making. Um, they got the dedication, they got the grit, got the passion, um, but just somebody to, you know, push them and uh, hold them accountable, but you know, doing that out of love. So, but it's uh, it's been real, real good getting to know them. And, uh, how, much you, how much you embrace being a mentor to those guys? Yeah, I mean, I love it because yeah, it's being a mentor isn't just about um, them following you. It's it's about learning from them as well. And in every situation I'm in, um, any circumstance, um, I learn just as much as uh, I give or teach. And uh, so that's been huge for me. Yeah. What have you learned so far in this process about playing for Coach McGuire? Uh, he, ho accountability, um, d the love a coach can actually have for their players. Like, you know, he tells us all the time that he loves it just as much as he loves his parents. Uh, and then love for the game. Like, he's intentional about the way he works, how he works, how hard he works, whether he's up at 4, 4.30 in the morning or he's, he's he has some late nights, 11 p.m., uh, but he loves the game. And uh, it just rubs off on us. Uh, and he loves to have fun too. Uh, he loves to have fun, and uh, that's what we want to do as well. We have fun when we win. Isaiah is a veteran guy too. Came in. Uh, what, what sticks out about him as, as you got to know him the last couple of months? He loved ball, um, X's and O's. Uh, he a hard worker, um, and he was actually on me. We actually took the same official visit. Uh, I, got, I met his parents a little bit, and he's a good, he good person too. What's your uh, impression of the culture that Coach Rule and the staff has built so far and maybe how it's progressed since you've been here? Yeah, uh, about brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? And you know, some key factors in that uh, is sacrifice, unconditional love, and accountability. Like, we, we're here to build a strong brotherhood, but that commitment is, it, it runs deep. It's about toughness um, and it's about willing, you know, to do anything to not let, you know, the, your, your, your teammate down, your coaches. Uh, I see myself as a reflection of everybody in the program. Um, and what they could do, I could do. And it's about raising the standard. Um, and then that's, that's something that I learned about Coach Rule is he, he loves you no matter what kind of decisions you make, but he's gonna make sure you know um, whether you're doing something right or you're doing something wrong. Uh, and he's not gonna lie to you. Coach Rule. Yeah. Praised you for your standard setting yeah. the last couple of months. What does that look like for you, and, and where does that come from as you go out and set that? Uh, where does what come? From? Where does just your your high standard for yourself? Oh, as you yeah, yeah. And, uh, just my upbringing. Uh, just growing up, you know, all uh, all sisters, my mom, my grandma, uh, no real father role model. Uh, just being a being a glue, you know, keeping keeping my family together. Um, you know, wherever they're going, I'm going. Uh, leaving no man, no woman behind. Uh, like I talked about, sacrifice and unconditional love. Uh, it's a part of me. It's part of who I am. It's part of my source. And uh, but yeah, that's where it comes from. What do you expect this spring? I mean, what's your can't know exactly how it's going to go for you yourself and the team, but do you have a vision for what you kind of expect? Uh, I expect hard work. I expect uh, mistakes. I expect to have fun. Uh, I expect to get better. Uh, I expect to this to to there be a, a precedent set it set 
for the team that we we're gonna be in the fall. So appreciate y'all. Tomorrow, your defense had a good season last year. I'm sure you didn't win as many games as you wanted, but statistically, it was strong. So how do you build as a defense on what you did, did well last year? I mean, it really is just capitalizing off last year. Like, yeah, it was – we played good last year, but it'll never be good enough. So, you know, we can fix a couple things as a defense and at the same time get our young guys ready to play. What do you want to fix? What, what do you feel like you guys can do a little better than you did last year on the field? I mean, just like little stuff like coverage, buzz, running the wrong blitz, small things. How big a deal is it? Have you noticed in the winter work that guys know what to expect now uh, with this coaching staff in year two as compared to year one? You, you see it a lot further along and just how things have gone. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel like it was a lot like we were more progressed because we knew what was coming. You know, they didn't change things. So I feel like if you knew what was coming, you had no choice but to attack it because there's no other way out of it. Individually, you had a, a, a solid year last year. What, when you look back at it, um, what, what kind of do you want to build on personally to, to take it to the next level? I want to become more explosive and gain more weight. And I mean, really just try to finish what I started, really. But I mean, it's not possible without my team, so. Jamari, what do you make of the the middle, that linebacker group with Nick and Luke moving on, who do you like there to kind of step up and be those next guys? I mean, I really like all them guys. You know, they rotated a lot. So I'm comfortable with any of them playing because they all have experience. How was uh, the off-season workouts, the mad drills? What have you seen from your teammates in terms of how they've kind of attacked those? I mean, you can see, like, is the brotherhood is still getting built. Like, we're still trying to find a foundation for it. But I mean, you can see guys doing it for each other and just not trying to make it through a workout. Coach White's name came out for a lot of jobs this offseason. I mean, how relieved was the room to know that he was coming back to, to lead you guys another year? Man, that was big. There you go, a lot. That was big. But I mean, he's a great coach, and uh, we knew those opportunities were going to come. I'm very happy he stayed. What do you like about him as a coach? He just let us play. There's not too much coaching during the game. So you're going to make a play call and you just go play. Is there anybody you think people are sleeping on? You expect some big things from this spring? I mean, I expect big things from everybody. But if I had to point out like a couple of young guys, I would say Larry Tarver or Vincent Shavers. They kind of caught my eyes during match drills. Just the, the way they go attack things? or? I mean, yeah, because it's their first time doing it. So for you to go out and attack it and you don't even know what you're doing, that's, that speaks numbers. You guys go back and, you know, do you reflect on last season? Do you ever watch former, like, games from last year or does that just get flushed? Yeah, it just get flushed. Nothing from last year matters. And as a team, like, we know that. Jamari, can you speak to how, how how much of a veteran presence there is on the uh, on the D line this year? Obviously, you have yourself, you got Ty and Nash, you know, and others with experience. How big of an asset can that be for this group? I mean, that's very big because God forbid, but one of us go down, like we can coach up whoever's stepping up in that position. But like I said, I'm comfortable with anybody being in the game because we all had experience and we hold ourselves to a higher standard. How have you seen? Um, you know, you had you had some freshmen last year, some true freshmen in that group. Van Poppel, Glenn Hart, Prince Will. What have you seen this in this um, short period of the year so far since the season ended from those guys and how they're working to um, improve on their first years in the program? I mean, they, they were young last year and they were already kind of moving like vets. 
So for them, I mean, they all gaining weight, putting on muscle. I mean, it's a big year for them. Thank you. Questions. What has this spring, this winter, now leading into the spring been for you? Um, it's been exciting. It's been a grind. It's been a lot of words. Um, it's been a pleasure, you know, working out with the guys that we have here. You know, coming in every morning, even when we all know no one wants to be here every morning and still giving everything we got is it's special to see and it's special to be around, you know. Um, I, I would say a lot of confidence has been gained from this off this winter and leading up to this spring, you know. A lot of guys have gotten way faster, way stronger, including myself, you know. And I couldn't be more ready to start, you know, getting into actual football. There was a lot of... Uh sort of news about the possibility of Coach White moving moving on to another job. How, uh, what was your feeling about that and, and your feeling about him coming back, the importance? Um, I know Coach White on a personal level. So, you know, honestly, when I seen it, I wasn't re I really as worried about it. I didn't have to ask any questions because I know what type of guy Coach, Coach White is. You know, he's... He's loyal. He actually cares about every player that he ever speaks to in this building. So, you know, when I saw the rumors or whatever, I don't even use Twitter as much, really, but, you know, everything comes across your phone at some point. I didn't really have any scared reaction to it or anything because I wasn't honestly worried about him going anywhere. You know, I know what type of guy he is. He works hard, and he wants to win. And... I feel like he knows that the group of guys that he has coming back wants to do the same thing, and he wouldn't leave us for none of that. What's the 2.0 version of Tony White's defense look like in year two? <laughs> um, it looks like guys who are experienced in playing it. I don't, I don't know how much is really going to change, like strategically or like schematically wise, but the guys that are on the field playing in the defense have now had a full year to play the defense and, you know, wipe out all the little kinks or uh, miss ops or anything like that. So I feel like schematically, there's only so much you can do, but the 11 people that's going to go out on that field and play are the ones that's going to have to make the true difference. Have you seen, uh, it's a quick obviously is going, you know, mm -hmm. pros and, and uh, you know, a couple other guys have left you, Omar, yeah. Phelan, um, who's kind of stepped up and tried to become competitive in those spots, especially at corner, because mm. Quentin had started there for four years. I mean, we have, I feel like it's still too early to tell. We haven't really played any football yet. Um, we have a lot of young guys. We have a lot of guys coming back. And honestly, everybody's just working with their head down right now. I don't feel like anybody's worried about, like, any spots or anything like that. Um, everybody comes in with the same mentality that we have to get better no matter what. And, you know, we want to make each other, what we're doing right now is trying to push each other to be better and push each other to do st things that are like uncomfortable usually for us to do. So we haven't really worried about like who's going to be any of that right now. Is Tony White and that staff really good at you know, the defense got kind of patted on the back a lot last year, but showing, like, <laughs> no, it can be better here, 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 and here. Uh, yeah, they yeah. don't They don't give us any – they give us praise, you know, for sure, but it's never enough, and we know that. We expect perfection from our defense, from our whole team, honestly. And honestly, we know last year wasn't good enough. Everyone knows last year wasn't good enough, regardless of any of the statistics or – 
what anybody else is saying. We know deep down that we didn't do enough to help us, you know, get to where we wanted to be last year as a team. And um, honestly, I feel like I feel like it's that's that's the right way to approach it. We don't want to be patted on the back. We're not a bunch of people who want everyone to just praise us and glorify us because we do some good things. We want to be the people who do everything good, who don't have miss miss opportunities in games and don't mess up on coverages and stuff like that. So that's just what we're leaning to right now. What does it mean to you to have all of your health back, to be able to even <laughs> practice this time of year? Oh, it's exciting. Uh, I couldn't be more thankful to, you know, a lot of, I feel like a lot of the time guys, they take this just spring ball and stuff, winter conditioning and all that stuff for granted, even myself at some point since I've been in college. And, you know, being out for a year from the one thing that you know and love the most is is tough. So I'm all in right now. I'm I'm 100% ready to, you know, just go. Honestly, if any, if there's any way to describe it, it's just go. Does it change so was the plan that you guys had last year where you, they, they waited to play those last four games to kind of preserve that red shirt you never got your first year and kind of maximize at least four games? Um, I think it was genius, you know, even for like just my health wise, like I wouldn't have been, I could have played, but it wouldn't have been a logical decision and I wouldn't have been my best self if I would have tried to play the whole season last year. So um, just sitting down with the medical team and the strength staff and the coaches, we decided that that was the best route to go to get the most out of me and keep me healthy as well. Have you found that it changes anything about your daily approach or just how you go about your business when you have your brother, little brother in the program, probably watching every move? Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's tough knowing that, not that I can't make a mistake, but if I do make a mistake, the one person who looks up to me the most is going to see me do that. And I've never wanted to show him any negative side of me, anything like that. So our whole life, I've tried to be a positive role model for him. So I would say him being here has just pushed me to elevate everything I do even more. What's your approach with your brother? Do you kind of let him do his own thing? Do you keep him under your wing a little bit? Um, I mean, he has to live. So outside of football, he's he's free to do whatever he wants. You know, he doesn't live with me or anything. He comes over to my place every every so often. But for the most part, I'm just trying to not really walk him through it, but just help guide him to give him the mindset to make the right choices for himself, not really tell him exactly what to do because we have a dad. And like I'm not his dad, I'm his brother, so there's only so much I can I can force him to do. You know, he, all, the, all the decisions he's going to make are going to be on his own, and I'm just trying to be here to make sure he has the mentality to make the right decisions. As a big brother, what has it been like for you to see him around, to <laughs> to watch him, you know, go through everything that you have to go through for winter conditioning and um, and all of that? Um, it's actually amazing. You know, this is my first time ever playing with him, so I've never seen how he is in, like, practice or how he works out besides, like, us working out together. But, you know, just seeing him in the team environment, I said – I told my mom the other day, we um, we had our team meeting last night, and I was like, this is kind of weird. We're <laughs> – you leaving with me to go to the team meeting right now. <laughs> like, we're really on the same team, but – I don't know it's it's special for sure. Um, I love having him here. I love seeing him every day, and you know, I'm just ready to ready to actually get to work with him. Jamal Banks was up here. Um, I don't know how much field work you've got to do with him, but mm -hmm. just even off outside of the field, how much is he kind of impressed about just fitting in and seeming like being a leader right away? Um, I love Jamal. Um, before he actually got here, once I seen he committed. I hit him up actually before he committed. I hit him up right on Instagram and I was like, "Hey, you got to you got to make this move, bro." But he's been he's been a great addition to this team. I feel like just the way he carries himself and the way he handles his business is is actually really impressive and I couldn't be more excited for anybody else on this team.
Anything else from my piece? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you.